Hello guys, this is Roger69501 and welcome to my channel. Well, on this video I'm going to give you my thought for the first story arc of Super Sun, which is uh, issue number one. Check out that cover. Nice cover. Issue number two, which is a lot better. Check that out. Issue number three, which is, we see the whole family. Check that out. Superboy fighting against Batman and Robin fighting against Superman. <laughs> and the last chapter, issue number four. Check that out. Okay. Well, this is the first story arc of the Super Sons. Well, I have to say that before the start, the story, well, to be honest with you, it's a fun read. It is fun. Uh, this is the same team that they used to uh, do the work on Batman and Robin back in the New 52. Well, it's the same team. And what they did on this first story arc, just fun. Just fun, fun, fun. Fun in a nice way. Not fun like a comedy, because it's not. Okay, let's get started. Issue number one. Well, issue number one starts a little bit weird, kind of like a lot like the screens. It starts with a, with a prologue that on the beginning doesn't make sense because it's not attached to nothing. And then from there we go to the future where we see a little bit of action here. Superboy and, and Robin running away from some androids or machines or walking toaster. Who knows? Uh -huh. And then from there we end up in the present. Okay, we see we see little John going to school. The thing is that, that you know, kids they decide to start kind of like a snow fight because one of them is a bully, and he was bullying one of the kids on the bus. And Superboy, well, he tried to be, or well, tried to do what Superboy is supposed to do: take care. Of the good people. Look at it. So they kind of like, they put a rock inside of the snowball. And then just right before the Superboy is going to throw that snowball, a giant snowball just falls on top of them. Check that out. Well, that happens to be Robin. The thing is that Robin, he was disguised as the school bus driver. <laughs> And not only that, he also was dressed up as a teacher, uh, John's one of his teachers at school. Because he, because Damien, he's kind of curious. Because he's been raised by the League of Assassins, so he actually never went to school. Actually, he doesn't know what school is. Regular school for us. Where he can see uh, some other kids and know that. So he's never seen that. So he wants kind of like to experience what it's like. To see what it's like and all that. And then from there, then we go to the back cave where we see Bruce Wayne. That he's going to, to do his work. And then he wants to go and Batman say, no, you're going to stay. And then he did, not, he, he did not like that. Then from there we go to the little town where we see the Kent spending a nice evening. Uh -huh. And they decide, and Superman decides that, well, he have to go, and this and that, okay, fine. So, Lewis and them and John are left behind, so we see John kind of looking at the window. And it's because Robin show up. You see, Robin, he wants to take, well, actually, Robin, uh, <laughs> The way that the day we wrote Robin on this on this series, he's still the same cocky, smart ass, loud mouth, pain the ass, but he's more cocky. So the thing is that he is because somebody's hacking into LexCorp computers. So Robin he wants to investigate that, and because Lex Luthor is. Superman's enemy, so he see, so Robin between the lines is kind of well, well, I'm gonna take Superboy with me. 
the thing is that <laughs> that Damien tells tells John, look, uh, I'm gonna you, I'm gonna let you be part of my investigation that I'm having. You know, so it's kind of like he it's like a Damien is trying to like he's doing Superboy a favor for let Superboy to be part of Damien's investigation. That's how cocky Damien is. Which I love to hate it. I love the character because I love the way that they write. I mean, I can see it in my mind. It's kind of like one of those kids at school. They're kind of like they they know it all, and you just feel like you just want to smack them <laughs> because of it. <laughs> it might sound mean, but I know. But hey, it's comic books. So, so we see that they decide to go and they make a little uh, small homage for Batman Returns over here. Check that out. Look at that. Now, that is awesome. Okay, issue. Now, the there that once that they, go, they get over there, they get caught by Lex Luthor. Nah. Go figure. So, the thing is, okay, issue number two. Issue number two is really is a lot better. I mean, the story is really simple. So, here we go back to the prologue, where we see this little kid talking you know, with his family, father, mother, and sister. So the thing is that we see it's kind of like the kid, he decides to kill his own parents. I know. So the kid from the prologue, he decides to kill his parents only to spare his sister's life. So he decides to keep his sister alive. So we see Lex Luthor talking to the kids like, okay, what are you doing here? Well, we are doing nothing, but guess what? He just pushed Superman, and he yells, well, guess what? He cannot fly. Making Lex Luthor go chase John before he hits the ground, without knowing that John is Superman's son. So the thing is, while that's going on, Damien decides to go inside the uh, Lex Lex core uh, building and hack the computers to see what's going on. I know, he is smart. The thing is that Lex Luthor caught up with uh, John, they're asking questions, and John is kind of like telling little lies. Half life, half truth. <laughs> and so, while all that's going on, finally, uh, Robin got what he was looking for, and they managed to escape. That was it. Okay. The thing is that we, that we see Demon's attitude right here on the bottom of the page over here. Over here. Like he just yawning, like, oh well, you know, I'm so good that I get tired. You know, I'm so used to it. You know. I know. So after that, so we see that they're they that they continue their investigation. The thing is that there's a kid that he has superpowers, which he was part of of the muscle virus. You see, the muscle virus which I'm going to show you, it was a small story arc back in the New 52 on Justice League, issue number 36. Not the Amaso, the villain. This is the Amaso virus. Issue 36, here's issue number 37. Look at that. Love the cover. Oops, sorry. Love the cover. Brian Cookies. Issue number 38. And the last part, issue number 39. So basically, this is how the Amazo virus was created by Lex Luthor. And give people, whoever get infected, I guess because during the fight with, uh, with the Forever Evil, the virus was released by mistake which it was one of Lex Luthor's lab. The thing is that he created that virus to make Kryptonians depower, especially Superman. Yeah, Lex Luthor says Kryptonians, the one that they're locked up in the Phantom Zone. But everybody knows that he means Superman. Because they because the Kryptonians, we know they only, what, 
how many they are? Three or four, a fourth as we know. So, you know. So the thing is that that virus escaped. And whoever eventually they created a vaccine for it. But only 94%, uh, 96% got the vaccine, got cured. But only 6% did not get it. So that's the 6% that still lose throughout the United States that have superpowers. And that's why they mentioned here on this series, the Amazon virus. So we, I guess I had to make a, a video. I, I think I have to reread this four issue story art and make a video. Art. I'm not sure if I already did one or not. I'm not sure, but I don't think so. But anyway, back to the super zone. Issue number three. Okay, here we see that that kid that we saw, well, the thing is that he becomes each person that got that virus will get a different power. Kind of like a random power. The thing is that that kid, his power was that he can multiply himself many times. And each, each part of him that is being multiplied will have part of his mind and so on and so forth. The thing is that he wanted to kind of like to, to become the, so powerful because he find uh, boring to be superhero. He find that to be boring. He wants to be a bad guy. So the thing is that Robbie and John figured out who that person was trying to get into Lex Luthor's computers, which I'm surprised that them is the one who find out and not Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor being, well, what he is. I know, but it's comfortable. But still, it makes me wonder, time to time, writers come up with, with this kind of like a curve, like, okay, how this person did, did not see it coming when this is more intelligent or smart than the other guy. Kind of, kind of well. So the, the, the thing is that this kid, he also created Android. The thing is that, not only that, his sister is the good guy. The sister has the power to control machines. You give it any machine, and she can control it. You give, it, you give her a toaster, and she will control that toaster to do, to toast whatever she wants. Or make it walk, or fly, or whatever. But, <laughs> but she can control machine. That's his sister. Now her brother, like I said, is the multiplier. So here we see that, not only that, that he created androids, robots, and all that. So the one that they're fighting, you, we see Superboy fighting Batman and Robin fighting Superman. Well, those two are androids because they can mimic or imitate the power or the superpowers that whoever superhero is close by. Ah. So here we see because that effect of the Amazon virus on this story. So if you want to, if you're, if you're reading this, if you're kind of lost about what is this about Amazon virus, well, sorry, I have to tell you, but you have to read this because it's the beginning. You will understand what the Amazon virus is all about and why the main characters here are contaminated by it. By it. So, I know. So, back to the story. So, we see Superman and Batman, the happy Charlie's son, sort of, from the road. So, here we see that the, the sister, look at that. She tells the android, put them down. Now. I mean, she is very bossy. This is the bad guy's sister. For some reason, he did not decide to kill her. He, did, uh, he only killed his parents, father and mother, and mother, because the whole family used to be kind of like a superhero, like a superhero family on their own town, little town. So they were happy by it. it just the kid kind of like, when he got infected, well, I think his mind got over flooded by it <laughs> or whatever. He just become, I don't know, whatever. So here we see that they're trying to escape. Uh, John tells Demi, look, we need to call the Justice League. 
or we need to call off our dad so they can come over because this is too big for the for the for the two of us and then me being cocky and self-centered is worse than Lex Luthor. He says no we don't need them. We can do this on our own. But hey I can stay here alone and while you join you can go running and run to your mama's spirit. So that <laughs> so Demi he's got and John he's, he's kind of like well, I'm not going anywhere so shut up so they spend most of the time on each other's case they it's kind of like you uh, the beginning of when Superman and Batman they meet that they start fighting each other and they don't trust each other but they like each other at the same time that they hate each other but the same thing is here they like each other to the point that they have to hate each other. They're not happy if they're not fighting. So for them to be happy, they have to fight between them. Fist fight, insult, you name it. It's here. So, so we see that the machines that was kind of like Superman and Batman, we see they kind of like transformed into the shapes of the Super Sun. So they start chasing them. I mean, this whole issue is about chase, chase, chase. So, uh, so the thing is that Demi, uh, John starts to argue to Demi and say, "Look, we need to talk to call our parents." And Demi kind of like kick him, and then he says no. And the little girl, and the girl, she kind of lost her her patience, and she just kind of like blow up and says, "Enough." So the thing is that. When the machine shows up, she kind of control the machines and make the machines kind of like kill each other. And then he came here and then he comes and take one of the one of the one of the androids and chop their head off. The thing is that while they are escaping, we see Damien here working on one of the uh, androids' head. And I don't, don't, uh, we don't know why until the end. Check that out. And we get to find out why they were chasing or chasing. They, why they were trying to hack into LexCorp computers. And this is issue number three. The end of it. Check that out. I mean, it's a fun story. Believe me, it's fun. Issue number four. Uh -huh. Okay. You see the cover? The kid on the middle? The one that is dressed on black? Well, okay, this is the uh, special armor that LexCorp have created. And the kid needs that armor so he can be more powerful than before. And that way he will not, you know, get, get too, uh, too weak fast. He, because eventually he will get weak. So with this armor, kind of make it more powerful. The thing is that from there we go to the city. We go to Louis Lane's home and Bruce Wayne. We see Louis Lane and Alfred calling for each other's kid. And they find out that, well, they are not home. And this is the Amaso kid. Check that out. So now the kid, with all that power, he called himself Amaso kid. Because he wants to have his sister on his side. I mean, if... A muscle kid have the power to create machine. Imagine what her sister can do by controlling that. I mean, they will be unstoppable. And he go by the name not a muscle kid, but kid a muscle. I say that was bad. Look at that. Awesome. So the thing is that here they explain you about the about the armor, why it works. So he's trying to to take to convince his sister to be part of his team, otherwise he will kill her, he will kill her and she just spit on his brother's face. As you can see there, she's not too happy. The thing is that the, the thing is that remember issue number three when Damien was working on that Android's head? Well, it's because he kinda like uh, reverse engineering to send a signal to Lex Luthor. So Lex Luthor shows up on, um, on Kid Damaso's hideout. Check that out. A screaming, give me back my 
a muscle, a muscle armor. So the kids and the the bunch of, of androids and Lex Luthor destroy them. At ease, uh, let's see what else we see. Uh, Superman, actually Superboy, saving people the same as a Robin, while Lex Luthor is busy fighting. The thing is that that they get attacked, and we see for the first time, at least in my case. We see Superboy using his super breath for the first time. Check that out, which is awesome. He still cannot fly. And that's another thing that Damien's like to bug the head out of John. He said, well, well, I mean, since, since you cannot fly yet, well, you can hop, 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 you know. And he, he likes to get into John's nerve big time. Because Damien, he's the type of kid that he can get under your skin. Or to you, uh, he can get into your nerve real quick. He knows how to press the buttons. <laughs> so even though, like I said before, they hate each other, but they like each other. They they, they cannot be without one or the other. So the thing is, we see the the master kid with the, he kind of like he got the armor, he got more powerful. The thing is that that her sister came in. And since she can control machine, and this armor has a little bit of, yeah, machine-like, so she kind of like told the armor to separate from her brother. And that's what happened here, leaving her brother exposed and weak. And her brother just passed out. Check that out. And we see that that Lex Luthor kind of like step on the armor. Look at that, right there. So the kids go kind of like to the, the hospital. Superman and Robin decide, well, they decide to go back home. And they know that they are, I mean, they don't know that they're waiting for them. And this is how the issue ends. <laughs> Remember, Arthur was looking for Damien. Well, Arthur went to Louis Lynn's house looking for Damien. And check what the, check what happened. So we have Alfred and Louis Lane waiting for the kids to get home. Just like in just like when kids kind of like sneak out, and when they get back, the parents they get caught. Well, same thing. And we can see that Louis Lane, well, she's not too happy about it. So that was the end of it. I mean, it's fun. I like the camp of chemistry. I like how the uh, writers take each other's personality and make it so good that they actually they are compatible to one another and good chemistry. And I like the art, the color, everything. I mean, it's a fun series. So far, it's fun. And I will get issue no um, issue. Uh, story arc, no, uh, the first story arc, issue one through four, we give it. Five out of five because this was so good. It's a fun story. Fun, simple story. is the story between two friends, John and Damien, being superheroes and their adventures trying to be grown-ups before their time. That's what it is. And I like it. It's fun. And the best cover, and so to me, the best cover is going to be this one. Issue number three, because I love this color. Check that out. So, like I said, I will give it five out of five. Well, guys, this is it. I hope that you like this video. Till later. Bye.